press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hi everyone. So in the last video, we were talking about the causes of biodiversity loss. So the four major causes of biodiversity loss are the habitat loss and fragmentation, or over exploitation and the alien species invasion and the co-extinction. And we also talked about uh, the importance of uh, biodiversity and uh, why we should conserve the biodiversity and what is the importance of biodiversity to mankind that we discussed in our previous class. And uh, in this class, I'm going to discuss how do we conserve biodiversity? How do we conserve biodiversity? So, because uh, we are getting multiple benefits from the biodiversity, right? Uh, from the economical point of view recreational point of view, medicinal point of view. So we are entirely dependent upon plants and animals for our food, right? Okay. So uh, in the last, in the previous class, uh, we talked about the importance of biodiversity. So we are getting the, both direct and from the biodiversity, we are getting uh, benefits both directly and as well as uh, indirectly. So that we already discussed in our last class. So and it's our responsibility to conserve or uh, preserve this uh, biological uh, wealth or the biological property for the next generation, for the future generation. So it's our duty to conserve this biological legacy, that means our biological property to our, for the future generation. So there is a need to conserve our biodiversity. So if, you, uh, if so, how do we conserve biodiversity? So let us uh, see how do we conserve biodiversity. So there are two major strategies of biodiversity conservation. One is in situ conservation, in situ conservation and another one is ex situ conservation, in situ and ex situ conservation. So these are the two main basic strategies of biodiversity conservation. So in situ conservation and ex situ conservation. So what is meant by in situ conservation? Okay, we will talk uh, in detail. In situ conservation. So in situ conservation means it is the conservation of It is the conservation of species in their in their natural habitat by protecting by protecting the whole ecosystem. See in situ conservation means what here? It is the conservation of species within their uh, natural habitat by protecting the whole ecosystem. So it is the conservation of either plants or animal species. So within their natural habitat. Okay. So that is what uh, in situ conservation. So here in in situ conservation uh, the emphasis no it is mainly given to the conservation of the protection of the whole ecosystem. So if we want to protect so her uh, conservation here, here you can also write uh, protection. It is the protection of the conservation of uh, species in their uh, natural habitat by protecting the whole uh, ecosystem. Okay. So here if we want to uh, save a particular uh, plant or uh, uh, animal species so we we are saving the entire ecosystem or the whole ecosystem okay so here in in situ conservation uh, the main emphasis is given to the protection of the entire or the whole ecosystem right 
so that so when the uh, when it is protected at a uh, ecosystem when the entire ecosystem is protected so this biodiversity can be uh, it is protected at all the levels no so like a uh, genetic level a uh, species level and also the ecological level right so in in situ conservation so it is nothing but what it is the protection of a uh, species in their a uh, natural habitat by protecting the whole uh, ecosystem right uh, see for example uh, if you want to protect any one particular species say for example if you want to save the tiger so we save the entire forest to save tiger we save the entire forest okay so that is what in situ conservation so here entire instead of uh, protecting a single uh, a species of plants and animals instead of uh, only uh, saving a particular species of plants and animals here the entire ecosystem is uh, protected but uh, here uh, in uh, mainly in in situ conservation no so here either a single species or uh, uh, assemblage means that means a group of uh, species and uh, the biodiversity rich areas are uh, identified and they so those biologically rich areas uh, because uh, it is uh, economically not feasible to uh, protect uh, the whole uh, biological wealth or the uh, what are all the existing ecosystem right so that uh, so biology in the uh, in situ conservation a particular species uh, uh, a group of uh, species are uh, biologically rich areas biologically rich uh, biodiversity okay so the rich uh, the areas with the richest biodiversity are identified and they are protected uh, legally so they are protected they are legally protected and uh, maintained so that is what in in situ conservation so uh, what is in situ conservation here it is a uh, very simple here the species are protecting or uh, conserving in their natural habitat so by protecting their entire habitat by protecting the uh, whole ecosystem so that is what in situ conservation so in in situ conservation strategies uh, there are two types hot spots and protected areas hot spots and protected areas okay so let us see what are these hot spots what are hot spots see hot spots are nothing but the areas with these are the areas okay so hot spots are the areas with high level of with high level of species richness high level of a uh, species richness one thing and i level of endemism and threatened with threatened with destruction okay see uh, what are as for see uh, Uh, hot spots means they are the areas having high level of species richness so these are the areas having a more number of species in a limited area okay and they are showing a high level of endemism so important endemism what is endemism okay uh, like endemism means what so here are uh, some species uh, here the species are found Uh, in a particular uh, they are confined to that particular area so that means uh, we are talking about hot spots no so what are the species found in that particular hot spots no they are not found anywhere else so that means they are confined only to that particular area and they are not found anywhere else okay so those species are called as what a uh, endemic species so endemic species means what here so the species which are confined to a particular uh, area or the species which are found in a particular area are not found anywhere else 
okay so that means those species are found only in that particular area okay and they are not seen in other areas okay so, so the such species are called as what a endemic species okay so let's call endemism and uh, threatened with the destruction so those hot spots if you want to call a particular if you want to identify a particular uh, region is hot spots so that uh, have a high risk of uh, being destroyed by the human beings okay so threatened it must uh, so it is having high level of so the area hotspots means what here the areas having high level of a uh, species richness and high level of uh, endemism and the area a particular area is threatened with destruction so it is uh, the area is at a risk of being destroyed by the human activities so such areas are called as what hotspots clear then in india there are total 34 hotspots are present sorry not in india entire globe so totally in the world there are 34 hotspots so earlier it was the number was 25 but now it is rise to a 34 so totally there are 34 hotspots okay throughout the world entire uh, that is the globe okay and in india so the three of them will occur in india so let us see what are the hotspots in india three hotspots in india western gods western gods and sri lanka then indo burma and the himalayan region himalay himalayan region okay so these are the three hot spots in india so that means these areas are considered as they are identified as hot spots because of its high level of species richness because of high degree of endemism and these areas are uh, threatened with our destruction they are facing at a risk of uh, being destroyed by the human being so so three such art spots have been identified in india so the first one is the western Ghats and sri lanka and the second one is indo burma and the third one is the himalayan region so these are the three name the three hot spots in india okay so important so i'll come to know what are hot spots so here hot spots no there are totally how much there are 34 hot spots are there and they are uh, covering an area of land area of uh, a uh, two point of one percent but the area uh, so even though its land area okay uh, is very less but it harbors uh, millions of uh, plants and the species okay so the area it is covering is very less but it is uh, discovering a uh, very less but the species present in that particular art spots will be a uh, more so if we strictly protect uh, these hot spots so definitely we could uh, reduce the ongoing uh, sixth mass extinction what you are uh, saying talking uh, talked about in the earlier class so if we uh, because uh, hot spots are the areas with high species diversity no so in a limited area they are having more number of species if we strictly protect these areas definitely we could reduce the ongoing that is the sixth mass extinction uh, we can reduce that uh, by 30 percent okay so that's what are uh, the hot spots one thing and another is protected areas protected areas See, protected areas are nothing but protected uh, areas. So these are the biogeographical regions. So protected areas are nothing but what they are the uh, 
bio geographical areas or the regions where uh, the biological diversity uh, along with uh, natural and as well as a uh, cultural resources are protected and maintained and they are managed legally okay so you know about uh, national parks biosphere reserves sanctuaries okay so all these uh, are nothing but what they are all uh, protected areas right okay so they are nothing but what protected areas the these are the biogeographical areas where uh, the biological diversity along with the natural and as well as cultural resources are uh, protected in their uh, natural habitat okay so those are called as uh, protected areas so let us uh, see some of the protected areas so these protected areas include so you have, uh, which are the protected areas here national parks sanctuaries biosphere reserves sacred groves so these are all the protected areas where uh, the plants and uh, animal species are protected in their uh, natural habitat okay so let us see what are national parks so what are national parks here so national parks are nothing but uh, these are the areas okay these are the larger areas of a uh, protected uh, habitat okay so these are the protected large uh, larger areas these are the larger uh, protected uh, areas here in uh, national parks these national parks are maintained by the government okay so these national parks are maintained by so national parks are the large areas okay they are the larger areas of protected habitat usually generally they cover thousands of acres okay and uh, they are maintained by a uh, government national parks are maintained by a uh, government and uh, so in uh, national parks so they are mainly reserved for the conservation of wildlife so here in national park uh, national parks both flora and as well as a uh, fauna flora means uh, plants fauna means animals so in the national parks both flora and fauna are protected here okay and here uh, human activities okay the human activities like uh, uh, grazing it may be either a uh, grazing or cultivation okay uh, so in national parks uh, uh, the activities like the human activities no human activities are allowed in the uh, national parks okay so either it may be a grazing or it may be a cultivation or it may be a cutting of trees or felling of uh, trees so entire such uh, human activities are not allowed here in the national parks okay so that is what a uh, national parks so national in the na they are the larger protected areas so they are mainly meant for the conservation of both flora and as well as fauna okay in national parks both animals and plant species are protected but uh, the human activities are not allowed in the national parks and uh, the first uh, national park which was uh, established in india is jim corbett national park okay so that is about our national parks and uh, sanctuaries sanctuaries means so these are also a uh, a tract of tracts of land that means a larger area of land where the animals are given uh, air the animals are protecting here okay so these are the tracts of land the main for the protection of animals so here in uh, sanctuaries so the animals 
are protected. So their animals are protected from all kinds of exploitation. So the animals are given protection from all uh, kinds of uh, exploitation, but uh, here only uh, import, here uh, both flora and fauna are uh, protected no, in national parks, but in wildlife sanctuaries only the animals are given uh, protection from all types of exploitation. But here, uh, here in national park human activities are not allowed right, but in uh, uh, sanctuaries human activities uh, are allowed to certain uh, extent. See for example, uh, uh, collection of uh, collection of forest parts, harvesting of timber, harvesting of timber and tilling of land, preparation and cultivation of land for crop, tilling of land, okay, and the private ownership. So private ownership of land, private ownership of of land are allowed here. See uh, what is the difference between national parks and uh, sanctuaries? Uh, national parks are larger than the wildlife sanctuaries, okay. In national, uh, so these are owned by, these are maintained by the government and here both flora and fauna, both plants and animals are protected and uh, no human activities are allowed here. But in wildlife sanctuaries, they are smaller than the national parks, okay, and here only the animals are protected and from all types of exploitation and here to some extent the human activities are allowed here. So for example, collection of uh, forest parts, a harvesting of timber, a tilling of land and a private ownership of the land. So such kind of activities are allowed in the wildlife that is sanctuaries, okay. So national parks over sanctuaries and two more are Biosphere, Biosphere Reserves. See Biosphere Reserves uh, they are larger than uh, wildlife san uh, sanctuaries that is sanctuaries and as well as uh, the national parks. So they may cover, uh, they are uh, very huge that they may cover one or two uh, national parks and wildlife sanctuaries, okay. So Biosphere Reserves are also a larger protected areas. So they are mainly meant for, they are meant for the conservation of, they are meant for the conservation of both plants and animals. Okay, so they are meant for, these are larger areas, okay, they are the protected areas and they are mainly meant for what? A conservation of plants and animals and also a uh, tribal people, okay. So the tribal people are the integral component of the system, okay. And uh, in each biosphere uh, resource, okay, there are uh, 14 biosphere resources are there, uh, that is the number which is given in your NCRT. So in each biosphere reserve, so in each biosphere reserve, there is a that uh, particular the entire biosphere reserve no so it is mainly differentiated into three zones okay so each biosphere reserve is having three zones okay the first that is the innermost area the innermost region of the biodiversity reserve that is the center most central part okay so that is called as what core zone so this is this area is the innermost that is the central part of the biosphere reserve and here only uh, that uh, no human activities are allowed in this uh, core okay so here is the legally protected area it is the innermost legally protected and undisturbed area so no human activities are allowed in this particular area 
understood and so human intervention is completely it is very strictly prohibited in this area so this is what the core zone okay so after the core zone this is the buffer zone okay so this area so this buffer zone this buffer zone surrounds the core zone so here uh, it allows uh, so here in this area so little uh, the like, uh, research activities and educational activities are allowed in this area so only limited activities are allowed in the buffer zone like uh, research and as well as uh, the educational activities only research and educational activities are allowed in this buffer zone so and uh, no more other activities okay only limited activities are allowed in this particular area that is the buffer zone and the outermost zone it is called as what the peripheral or the outermost zone of the biosphere resource okay it is called as what a transitional transition it is called as transition zone so what is this transition zone so here this is the uh, area okay so this is an active area in cooperation with the reserve uh, management and as well as the local people living there okay so here uh, some kind of human activities like uh, uh, human settlements okay human settlements are allowed here uh, cropping recreation of uh, forestry and human settlements are allowed in this uh, area that is in the transition zone so human settlements cropping okay forestry recreation so uh, permitted with the cooperation of this uh, reserve management and as well as the local people living there okay so it is an area an active area of uh, that is in cooperation with a uh, reserve management and as well as the local people so the biosphere reserve is differentiated into three zones the innermost uh, zone okay the central part of the biosphere so in this uh, area no human activities were allowed and it is a legally protected area and surrounding this area is the buffer zone which is where allowed uh, limited human activities like research and educational activities and the peripheral part the outer skirts so that is uh, Uh, in cooperation with uh, this an area in cooperation with uh, that uh, reserve management along with some local people okay so here some activities uh, are allowed like uh, uh, cropping uh, forestry human settlements are allowed in this area so these are what the biosphere resource so biosphere resource are larger uh, than the two that is national park and reserves and they are uh, they may include one or more uh, widely uh, that is sanctuaries and as well as national parks and here both flora and fauna are protected so uh, as there huge ones so in the uh, they are differentiated into mainly uh, three zones core zone buffer zone and transition zone okay this is what biosphere reserve and the next is sacred groves sacred groves means what so these are the traditionally conserved these are the traditionally conserved patches of these are the traditionally conserved patches of forest dedicated to dedicated to local deity deity means what god or goddess okay so sacred groves are nothing but what these are a uh, traditionally conserved a uh, forest patches they are mainly they are dedicated to a local deity they are dedicated to a god okay so you might have seen in some tradition a tract of a uh, forest uh, they set aside and whatever the plants and animals are there in are worshiped and they are given total protection okay so the no no one is allowed to cut uh, the trees 
and as well as the plants and no one is allowed to kill any animals or no one is allowed to harm any form of life present in that particular area so because of what because of some as the because this grows so these areas are considered as sacred that means uh, that uh, they uh, think that they have a um, uh, thought that uh, this belongs to this uh, property belongs to a god so this is the god's first living uh, uh, that place okay so that uh, because of some fear and because of some faith in god so uh, no one is allowed to uh, touch the things uh, that whatever the plants and animals and other form of life whatever there it is uh, present in the uh, particular area no so no <coughs> Totally, the human uh, intervention is strictly prohibited there. Okay, so no one is allowed to kill or uh, harm any form of life. No one is allowed to cut any trees or uh, plants. Okay, so those are called as what? Because of because that entirely that particular area is entirely dedicated to God. No, so no one is allowed to uh, cut the trees and kill the animals uh, present in that particular uh, vicinity. Okay, so that is what the sacred grows. So because of that, uh, they are giving a uh, protection. Some uh, because of that uh, fear uh, or faith in God, we are protecting uh, uh, some species there. Okay, so that is what sacred grows. So all these will comes under uh, in situ conservation. So conservation of species within their natural habitat by protecting the entire or uh, the whole ecosystem. So that includes what the hotspots, national parks, biosphere reserves, <coughs> sanctuaries. And sacred groves. Understood clearly? In situ conservation, then ex situ conservation. So, in in situ conservation is the conservation of species within their natural habitat. No. So, but in ex situ conservation is the conservation of species outside their natural habitat. ex situ conservation so what is meant by ex situ conservation it is the conservation of it is the conservation of threatened species it is the conservation of threatened species whether it may be a plant or animal threatened species outside outside their outside their natural habitat but in the captivity see ex situ conservation means what here it is the conservation of threatened species of uh, plants and animals. So, threatened species are the species which are going to become uh, extinct. We, if, if we do not take care of them, they are going to become extinct. So, those we call as what threatened species, right? Okay. So, in ex situ conservation, so it is the conservation of threatened species outside their uh, natural habitat. So that is uh, some animals they are uh, protecting in the captivity. Captivity means what they are held by humans uh, preventing uh, them from escaping right. So that is called as living in captivity. So some animals are uh, they are animals wild animals. So here some threatened species of plants some threatened species of plants and animals are identified and they are taken out from their natural habitat. So that means those plants and animal species which are going to become uh, extinct. So those kind of species were identified and they are taken out from their uh, natural habitat. Either maybe uh, they are in the uh, forest or so like that uh, so from their natural habitat they are taken out and they kept in uh, specialized uh, settings and where they are given uh, protection and as well as a special care. Okay, so that is what ex situ conservation. So ex situ conservation means the conservation of threatened species outside their uh, natural habitat.
okay uh, the examples for some of the uh, ex situ conservation in tools it includes botanical botanical gardens zoological parks so along with uh, botanical gardens means what so it is the place where the plant species are conserved so the plants which are uh, being extinct in the wild are identified and they are uh, grown and they are conserved so, so the such kind of plant species are conserved in the uh, botanical garden so these are the places where the plant species are uh, given uh, protection and they are conserved and they are uh, maintained okay and uh, zoological parks so zoological parks zoos uh, you might have seen uh, that uh, these are the places where the animals are kept in a protected environment so the animals particularly the wild animals which are going to become uh, extinct which are likely to become extinct in the future so those type of animals uh, they are uh, protected okay so place uh, the where that kind of animals were uh, protected uh, in a <coughs> they are uh, kept in a protected environment under human care okay so in uh, zoological parks so all the animals uh, which are present in that particular zoo uh, in zoological park no so they are given a uh, same conditions as present in their natural habitat and all those animals wild animals are protected in that uh, parks okay so zoological parks are the places where the wild animals are kept in a protected environment under human care so they they are protected wild animals are protected in the zoological parks okay so uh, apart from that so so when you come to when you talk about recent advancements a seed bank seed bank so seed banks are nothing but uh, these are also a place where uh, the seeds of uh, different uh, uh, genetic strains okay the seeds of uh, different uh, genetic strains of the commercially important plants or the seeds of the endangered plants are uh, collected and preserved for a longer time in the seed bank so here the species are not conserved but uh, the plant species are not conserved here but the seeds of the plant species that be, that are going to become extinct so those uh, type of plants were identified and those seeds were uh, collected okay and the seeds of uh, commercially important uh, plants were also uh, collected and they are preserved for a long time in the seed banks okay and one more thing is uh, tissue culture tissue culture so in tissue culture uh, so here uh, in tissue culture methods uh, by using a small part of the plant okay so by using uh, any part of the any part of a uh, plant small part of a uh, plant so any part of the plant is uh, taken in a test tube they are taken and grown in a test tube by using a nutrient uh, media okay so tissue culture means what so in tissue culture it is possible to develop a whole plant whole plant by using a small part of the plant okay so the sp species the plant species uh, which are going to become extinct so they can be uh, grown by using uh, tissue culture uh, methods and we can increase their number okay so that is tissue culture and uh, cryo preservation cryo preservation so cryo preservation uh, is nothing but what uh, so here in cryo preservation Uh, any plant cells or animal cells or the whole uh, tissues the entire uh, uh, tissues okay either plant cells animal cells the or else uh, the cells of plants and animals or the whole uh, tissues or else even uh, the gametes okay so even the gametes of endangered species are uh, protected they can uh, preserve okay they can preserve in a liquid nitrogen they can be preserved for a longer time in liquid in a liquid nitrogen 
at minus 196 degree celsius okay so that is what cryo preservation so in cryo preservation it is possible to uh, store either cells or uh, tissues or that uh, entire uh, that uh, gametes okay in a liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degree celsius okay so that is what this all these will comes under ex situ conservation because here we are conserving the plants and animal species outside their natural habitat right so botanical gardens they are not natural they are all man made zoological parks man made so they are conserving outside their natural habitat so they all fall under what ex situ conservation so this is what the how uh, that is in situ and as well as the ex situ conservation okay so we can either uh, conserve the biodiversity in their natural habitats or in the that is man made habitat that is either in the captivity understood clearly so what is in situ and what is ex situ conservation so this is important right a uh, note on uh, in situ conservation or uh, ex situ conservation of biodiversity or else i may ask either only in situ or ex situ or else uh, write a note on biodiversity conservation how uh, we can conserve uh, biodiversity if uh, they ask like that you have to write both in situ and as well as ex situ conservation okay then next is conventions on biodiversity so international efforts made to conserve our biodiversity okay so it was in the year uh, 1992 the earth summit the earth a uh, summit was held the earth summit was held at rio de janeiro so they promoted the historical historical convention historical convention on biological diversity so it is the it is the responsibility that is biodiversity condition uh, that is conservation it is not the responsibility of one or two but instead the biodiversity conservation it is the responsibility of all the nations right because it has no political boundaries so it's a responsibility conservation of biodiversity is the responsibility of all the nations so with regard to that uh, in the year 1992 the earth summit was held okay uh, at uh, rio de janeiro so that is the con historical convention on biological uh, diversity so in that they called upon all the nations they called so in the earth summit uh, called all nations all nations or uh, that uh, to or uh, that they called all the nations uh, to conserve to take appropriate measures to conserve uh, the biodiversity okay so the earth summit uh, which was held in rio de janeiro they called all the nations to take appropriate measures for what appropriate measures to conserve a uh, biodiversity and also the sustainable uh, utilization of that uh, benefits okay so sustainable uh, they called upon to conserve that is uh, to take appropriate uh, that means ways and means to conserve biodiversity and also to uh, sustainable its sustainable uh, use of uh, the benefits of biodiversity so that was uh, held in uh, 1992 after uh, so in the follow up that is after later uh, 10 years in the year 2002 the second 
summit that is the world summit the world summit okay so was held at uh, johannesburg south africa okay here in the world summit 192 nations okay so the 192 uh, nations they pledged what attending this summit no so they pledged what they pledged they pledged to uh, that uh, reduce to reduce the current uh, biodiversity loss by the year 2010 okay so in the year 2002 the world summit what uh, held in the year 2002 at johannesburg south africa so here 192 nations have pledged okay 192 nations have pledged to reduce the current biodiversity loss by the year uh, 2010 okay so the pledge to significantly reduce the current biodiversity loss by the year or 2010 so these are all some of the international efforts made to conserve uh, biodiversity understood so that is what a convention on uh, biodiversity understood clearly so this completes uh, the chapter that is biodiversity and conservation understood okay then so uh, what are the important things uh, here the main thing is the causes for loss of biodiversity so that is a five mark question then biodiversity conservation that is in situ conservation and as well as uh, ex situ conservation and uh, biodiversity at all the levels genetic level what is gen uh, that is uh, genetic diversity species diversity ecologic sorry ecological diversity okay and what are all the examples that is the recent extinctions okay i have given the examples of some important recent extinctions right that is dodo stella seco three sub species of tiger okay so all those things quagga so you have to remember that okay and uh, what are uh, the that is uh, list uh, iucn list that is uh, the total number of species in the world okay the total number how many are in india number of species in the um, species in india okay and what are all the examples i have given so you go through it okay so this completes the biodiversity chapter okay hope uh, all you have understood the chapter right thank you